Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about how roads are built in China. Now, road infrastructure plays an important role in the economic growth and development of any country. A low level of road quality becomes a reason for the high costs of roads. Now, China was able to solve this problem very quickly, so be sure to watch until the end and let us know what you think in the comments below. Okay? Enjoy! So China is building roads at a rate of 0.5 miles per hour. 50 years ago, China was one of the worst countries for hard-topped roads. The Chinese government thought there were more important things to do. Now, the situation started changing only in the 1980s when they realized they couldn't progress without modern roads. The phrase, if we want to get rich, we need to build roads first, appeared. During that time, the government accepted the first plan of creating a high-speed government road network and developed the corresponding quality standards. They determined the financial sources for the construction, government budget, local budget, road maintenance funds, additional taxes on car purchases, duties on gas, etc. And in 1855, all of this was set up in separate laws. We have many organizational problems that are still unsolved. Then the government decided to collect tolls for using high-class highways to pay off the construction. The first high-speed road from Shanghai to Zhiding is 11.5 miles long. It was opened in 1988 with more to follow quicker and quicker. In the first 10 years, China was able to build roads to a degree that took Europe and the US over 50 years to do. The high-speed highways raised the level of all the road construction, which was good for the lagging industry that used to focus on making shovels, wheelbarrows, hand rollers, and millions of low-paying workers made a modern amount of money. Serious road technology producers appeared. Now, high-speed road construction continues now at a fantastic rate. By the early 21st century, they had built over 6,200 miles of road, in 2002, 12,400 miles, and 37,200 miles in 2008. In 2017, China was the third highest rated country for general road length at over 2.9 million miles. China now has 300,000 bridges, thousands are over a half mile long, and some of the world's longest bridges are in China. One of the most frequent examples is the Donghai Bridge. For the Shanghai port to accept large ships, a special port was built on the neighboring island that has an eight-lane road coming from the mainland that's 20 miles long. The construction lasted three years. In that time, they built a bridge with high-quality asphalt and lighting. China moved up to second place in the world for the amount of modern roads, and all of their highways were built in 20 years. Now, the Chinese didn't invent anything here. The government and regional institutions plan how they should grow the transport network, considering economic growth, motions of trucks and cars, and the growth in the amount of cars owned. The country has a lot of money, including free money they can focus on building modern infrastructure. From 2005 to 2010, investments in creating a network of national high-speed highways in China amounted to 17 to 18 billion US dollars per year. Now that the main arteries are already installed, they spend about 12 billion a year. Federal or local governments completely control the construction, but it's carried out using contractor money. The government pays the contractor only after the whole project is complete and only the amount agreed to on in the contract. The high rate is a direct result of the system. The builders want their investments back as soon as possible, and it doesn't harm the quality. The agreed upon construction time is no less than 25 years.
Now, most roads in China are free. But there are two types of toll roads, government ones built using their budget and commercial ones built using a company's budget or loans from companies. For a simple driver, there's no difference. But according to law, a government road should be free after 15 years of use and a commercial one after 25 years. Now, I'm sure you know this, but mile-long traffic jams are a real problem for all big cities. So what can you say about China that has over 1.5 billion people? So the Chinese government had to take unpopular steps to unburden the road systems in big cities. So driving into Beijing for non-citizens requires special permission. But locals can only drive into the center four times a week. It's determined by the last number of your license plate. If it's an even number, you can use your car on even days. If it's odd, you can use it on odd days. Trailer trucks and trucks can only be on big city roads at night from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Since 2000, the length of Chinese highways has grown 10 times and surpassed the U.S. in 2010. Currently, the length of Chinese highways is greater than all of Europe's by one and a half times. In 2020, the length of Chinese highways should have surpassed all of Europe, the U.S., Japan, and South Korea combined. The current construction rate is about 6,200 miles for highways, a few times higher than the U.S. The economic development couldn't have happened without good roads. The economic development couldn't have happened without good roads. Now, China doesn't do anything special, but their economic growth is anything but a miracle. The system they planned, multiplied by the system of fair punishment and stimulations and financial sources, are all the pieces of the puzzle for Chinese success in road building. Well, that's all for today. If you learned something new, be sure to leave us a like and subscribe too. See you again soon.